So I suggested a certain way of reading the notion of a form of life, and one could argue that there are lots of possibilities of interpretive disagreement about the equally important notion of a language game. And one fundamental disagreement might be worth mentioning. It's very easy to read the investigations and to understand the way in which it invokes that concept of a language game as directing us towards the thought that Wittgenstein envisions ordinary language as a kind of vast overlapping network of language games. So that the notion of a language game is meant to be a kind of analytical component of a natural language, of ordinary language more generally. So that when he asks his famous question about what is the language game in which this word finds its original home in order to try and encourage us away from philosophical emptiness, what he's really asking us to do is to identify language games that form an actual part of our everyday life with words. And it's that recovery process that leads us away from philosophical nonsense or, or emptiness. But there's an equally strong strand of thought in the text and in Wittgenstein's writing, later writing more generally, which would suggest that language games are not meant to be, as it were, analytically detachable components of ordinary language so much as objects of comparison. In other words, the idea is that Wittgenstein invents language games, makes them up, perhaps sometimes by radically simplifying some fragment of ordinary language. But the point, uh, their functional use in his philosophical investigations, is not, as it were, to make a claim about how ordinary language actually is, 